this light here, these are, these are solid fluorescents. Mm -hmm. They can't be moved backwards, but we can put a cover over the end of it and try and get that over, over spray that the first light gets. Do you think that, well, that should help. Do you think that anybody is interested in getting screens for up there? I don't want to answer mm -hmm. because, you know, the size of it. I just wonder because you know I go to other places and I was kind of just going down as well. I was yeah, I went to Second Bed just the other night. I'm not if you've ever been in here, but they have two with screens and then they also project two on the wall. And this is you know you can really tell the difference between the screens and the wall. Yeah.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Nice to see you on this crisp morning. <clears throat> Our gospel text today is the story of Joseph. M Matthew tells the birth of Jesus through Joseph's eyes. And we're going to see what that means for us in his dream and the visit of the angel. Let us prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says our God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in the good news. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. <laughs> and your peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
is the wick that is central to the candle. Love is the wick given by God, the flame that burns continually. Love is the wick given by God that burns in the world. Love is the wick given by God that burns in our hearts. Let us pray. Source of light. Shine in our lives and in your world with your unending love. Through Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. <clears throat> then Isaiah said, excuse me, <clears throat> Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, a young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before those two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness, was res by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, <coughs> through whom you have received grace and apostleship, to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, 
planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had bore a son, and she named him Jesus, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. <coughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is love. God is with us. Do you, are, are you one of those people that remembers their dreams? Well, I guess you're all thinking that's a rhetorical question. Hopefully you're answering it in your mind. Some, of you, some people uh, tell me that they don't remember the dreams, and I find that fascinating because I often remember mine. Do you ever think? Have you ever been moved <clears throat> by a dream? Thinking, boy, I should take action on this. That can happen. A couple of weeks ago when we were visiting, uh, doing home communions, one of our uh, elderly folk said, uh, Pastor, I, I've had dreams. And I go, oh, really? Dreams about my nephew. Well, what about your nephew? I haven't seen him in 30 years years, maybe 40 years, but I've been dreaming about him, and I've been thinking about him. What do you think? And I go, well, and then she said, it's got to mean something. Why else would I start dreaming about him? And I suggested she hire a private investigator. Well, I don't have that kind of money. So I said, give me his name. I know somebody who will look it up, maybe, and maybe find him. But obviously, she had a dream, and she felt moved by that dream, because she felt maybe, just maybe, this is a message. God is sending me a message that I should be doing something, and that I should find my nephew. Sometimes we dream and we sense loved ones in our dreams and uh, sometimes that's a call to action. What about our loved one? Or it's just worries and anxieties being worked out in our dreams. How many students have had dreams of missing finals? I have or getting to the final and realizing I never went to class. <laughs> or constantly missing a train or a bus. Our anxieties, our daily anxieties get worked out. But then, there are those dreams where God speaks. And we feel we must act. Joseph's dream. First, he's in, been engaged to marry. Engagements in the first century Jewish culture were uh, usually matches and they were contracts worked out with the family. And it wasn't a simple contract. I mean, we think, well, we'll just break off the engagement, give back the ring. 
or maybe even keep the ring, just break off the engagement. But no, it had to be a divorce. Once in, people were betrothed, there had to be a divorce. And Joseph, the unthinkable happens. Mary, his betrothed, is pregnant. And the betrothal period lasts a year, and part of that year, the last half of that year, the, the bride would move in with, with the groom. The groom is still generally staying with his parents, so they're chaperoned, and there's not to be any conjugal rights between the two. Once there are conjugal rights, they're considered married. Well, Mary, before she moved in with Joseph, is found to be with child. It had to be very hard on Joseph. It had to trouble him deeply. His betrothed had been unfaithful, had someone else's child. So, an angel needs to intervene because Joseph has one of two choices. He can uh, get the priests and they go down to the square or into the temple and Joseph shouts, I divorce her, I divorce her. And everyone goes, oh, Mary. And they find out she's pregnant. And in some communities, depending on how uh, well they follow the Deuteronomic law, they would stone her for her unfaithfulness. But Joseph decided, being a righteous man, our text said, he decided to do so quietly, just go to her parents and explain to them the situation. Instead, an angel comes to him in a dream and speaks to him and says, oh, go ahead, it is all right. What happened to her is a holy thing. The Holy Spirit did it. Keep her as your wife. We see in this that Joseph had to be suffering somewhat. Mary had to be suffering. Matthew, we believe, wrote to a, a Jewish culture, a Jewish group of Christians, and those Christians were often attacked, criticized by outsiders saying, oh, Mary was a prostitute, or Mary was the victim of assault, probably by some Roman soldier. And Joseph says, that's all right, let them say that. Because God works in mysterious ways, even through scandal and the scandalous. Let me give you an example. Now, here, let's talk a little bit by, about suffering for a moment. David Lewis puts it this way. We have, each of us, experienced similar upheavals. Have we in our lives, as Mary and Joseph, or with our children? Who knows how many of the folks in front of you are struggling to hold it all together while at church? Families who struggle with discord, couples who feel disconnected, Kids wondering what future they may have. Elders wondering the same thing from a different point of view. Some seek jobs, some relationships, some any sense of acceptance or worth. Mary and Joseph were very ordinary people who God chose to work through in an extraordinary way, even in the midst of scandal in their lives. It's interesting that the verses before this in Matthew is the genealogy of Jesus through Joseph. Joseph, the inheritance and blessing uh, passes through the male in Jewish culture. So we see that lineage of males. There's 42 males Male ancestors of Matthew, list, or of, excuse me, of Joseph, listed by Matthew, 42 males, four women. 
And it's unusual, the four women that Joseph, or that, that Matthew mentions, the four women who are ancestors. The first is Tamar. Does anybody remember who Tamar was? She was the daughter-in-law of Judah. She, uh, many believe she was a Gentile. Her husband died. It said, the text, the Bible says, he displeased God and he died. Onan was his brother, and according to Leverite marriage laws, he had to marry Tamar, or at least have children with Tamar. He wouldn't. He dies. Sheila, the next son, is afraid to marry her. He doesn't want to die. But Judah says, don't get married. Stay a widow until Sheila will marry you. Well, he never does. So she goes and masquerades as a prostitute. Judah sees her and has sexual relations with her. Why did Matthew, why did Matthew mention Tamar? Of all those 42 wives, why her? Then he goes on to mention one of Joseph's ancestors, Boaz. Boaz had a wife, Hagar, or excuse me, Rahab. Rahab. We should, we all probably remember who Rahab was, the prostitute who hid, hid the Israelites when they, Israelite spies when they went into the land of Canaan. Of all the women, of all the wives, why the scandalous one? And then Ruth, Ruth a Gentile. We can talk about her scandal, but we won't do it now. And then finally, Solomon, whose father was David, whose mother was the wife of Uriah. Uriah, of course, being a Gentile. But who was the wife of Uriah? Bathsheba. We all know her scandal. Why? Just the scandalous women. Well, Matthew is telling us something. That God works through even the scandalous, even the bad in our lives to bring the one who is God with us into this world. So ordinary people, scandalous behavior, God works despite even in and through the scandal. God can come to us at times we least expect and in ways we least expect, and through those whom we least expect, it is through us, ordinary people, that the one who is Emmanuel, God is with us, works. I mean, isn't that good news? That it's even through us, in our lives. In spite of whatever bad might be in our lives, that God chooses to work through us. John Ortberg says the central promise in the Bible is not, I will forgive you, although, of course, that promise is there. It is not the price, promise of life after death, although we are offered that as well. The most frequent promise in the Bible is, I will be with you. So God will be with us forgives us through his grace, redeems even the scandal so that he can be with us and work through us.
So how is the God of love expressing God's self through you? And through those around you? The text tells us that Joseph gave Jesus, gave the baby, born of Mary, the name Jesus. And what did that mean? Joseph now is saying to the world, this baby is mine. If he would have not named Jesus, then he was telling the world, this baby is not mine. But he's saying, this baby is mine. This baby, I am this baby's father. You see, in the first century, the father's acceptance was more important than the bloodline. So the father accepting Jesus and naming him told the world, I accept him. He belongs to me. So, again, how is God working in and through you? He worked through Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. God worked through Mary and Joseph and the scandal that happened. How is God working through you, through us? Charles Randall tells a story. He was a pastor in an inner city. And a man came to him one day, a man who lived in the city. He was one who, um, though not homeless, was nearly homeless. He came in one Saturday afternoon when he was writing his sermon, and they sat down in the pastor's office, which he occasionally did. And Pastor Randall says, Jim, what do you want? And Jim says, I don't want anything. I just came to talk. Pastor Randall shakes his head, wondering what he's doing with a man who's dressed in mismatched clothing, hasn't taken a bath in days, maybe weeks. And Jim says, I'm moving tomorrow. Pastor Randall says, moving? He says, yeah, I'm moving. That woman, who I've been paying a little rent to, she died. You know, she was dying of cancer, and I took care of her for three years while she died. She was a good woman. He said, I think she loved me. I know I loved her, but we never talked about it. Pastor Randall felt a little guilty at that moment. And then Jim says, I don't want anything except to say goodbye and to give you these. And they gave him a little bag with six pairs of glasses. Jim had real thick glasses, couldn't see very well. And he said, I thought maybe you could give these to someone who's less fortunate than me. And Pastor Randall is thinking, less fortunate? And that's when Jim said, yes, you know, there are people out there who have very little. And look, I have so much. Must be at least five or six pairs of glasses in the sack. God has given me more than I deserve. I just want to help out. I'll send you all a postcard from Indiana. I think I still have a sister up there. 
And with that, Pastor Randall shook his hand, he left his office, and he never heard from him again. But he realized that even in Jim, our God of love, our God who promises to be with us, he was even working in and through Jim. So how is God working in your life? Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. See that the right hand of the Father will come again as the quick death. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we anticipate the fullness of the presence of Christ, we join with the church throughout the world, praying for all who are in need. God of love, we lift up the church universal and all servants of the gospel. We remember poets and artists, musicians and preachers, and theologians and teachers that all proclaim that God is with us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God of Israel and all the world, we pray for the nations and those in authority. We pray for your peace and justice throughout the whole world. And for those who advocate on behalf of others, may all in positions of leadership choose what is good for life in our world. Lord, in your mercy. God, our healer, let your gentle spirit descend upon those for whom we offer our prayers. We remember especially Jeannie Burnell Graves, Carolyn Callan, Jeff Dykeman, Michelle Farley, Blue Graves, Doug Hobine, Robin Kennedy, Alan Malcolm, Jack Myers, Chris Marquardt, Wayne Myers, Bill Payne, Chris Plate, Jim Raisins, Pat Roper, Pat Chicaney, Bonnie Turner, Rod West, and Marietta Young. Are there any others? Receive our thanksgiving for the saints who have died and are now at rest. We remember especially Alan Caymans, Ray Umland, and Mary Lou Fisher. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we commend into your care and leading those who travel near and far, those who prepare our congregation for worship and celebration, and those who gather around word and sacrament, that all experience welcome and refreshment. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, those spoken aloud and those known only to you, and grant us peace through Jesus Christ, our coming Savior. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be he with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us, and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in this world, announcing your coming among us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. I don't know about you, but when Pastor said, uh, how is God working through you and through us? I've just been amazed at um, Messiah's response to the various uh, requests for help over the holidays. I know there was the, the tree for Lutheran and Children Family Services. There was the request for toys. And then there was the request for food and personal hygiene items. If you took a basket for the reverse advent calendar project, uh, those can be returned anytime now between um, now and the end of the year. Those uh, items will be going to cross lines. We are also collecting money for cross lines if you'd rather give a donation or also a donation. Our goal is to collect um, $1,250, which would be uh, $25, $50 donations. Uh, we have about 200 of that donated already, but there are 16 baskets that have been returned as well. So um, again, those can come back anytime between now and the end of the year, and thank you for your generosity. Thank you, Chris. Next Saturday happens to be December 24th. So Saturday evening we have three worship services. You can check uh, out times in your bulletin. And next Sunday, we're going to have one worship service that happens to be Christmas Day. We'll have one worship service at 10 a.m. I think that's all I have to announce. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, have the resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, remember the poor, 